Good morning, YouTube. MMA Joe here with all the dogs. Um, we got to talk Corey Sanhagen, TJ Dillashaw. Full disclosure, it is the only fight that I watched on that card last night. But it was a doozy. And we got to talk about that decision. Like, I listen, I'm not that mad at it. Um, good on both of those fighters. I thought they did awesome. And I'll get into that. But uh, I'm not in agreement with the decision. So that's really what this is going to be about. Um, where to start with this? Uh, let me start with TJ Dillashaw. Um, I'm just super impressed, man. Um, you know, the cut on his face, the shredded knee, the mental toughness, having to fight through all that, being uh, probably two years or more away. Um, that was impressive. It was. Um, but nevertheless, I, I still think it was the wrong decision. Um, and where do we start with this? I guess, let's go back to GSP. You know, in GSP's title run, the, the scoring criteria was different, and it seemed like that GSP could get beat up for an entire round, score one takedown, even if the guy got right back up or he held him on the ground, whatever, he would win that round on points. And as you know, GSP won all of his fights, basically, by decision. So enough rumbling and enough people got mad about it. They changed the scoring criteria. The scoring criteria now consists of uh, damage, um, ring control, uh, aggression, whatever. But they don't value the takedown like they used to. Of course, damage is the number one criteria. So let's keep that in mind. All right. Let me go back to TJ Dillashaw. Two years ago, he pops for, uh, maybe a little bit more, pops for EPO. He's trying to go down to 125, challenge the um, title holder there, and he has plans of being a three-division champ. Very ambitious. So he pops for EPO. Now, that's his only failed drug test. USADA takes an A and B sample every time they take a sample. They always test the A, leave the B, you know, to reference if they need to. Supposedly, USADA's gone through all of his B samples. Nothing, nothing popped. So, if all that is true, we can assume that TJ made a mistake, just like human beings do. And um, he paid the price for that. Uh, he was suspended and hasn't fought in over two years because of it. So... Um, based on that information, I don't think TJ Dillashaw is a lifelong cheater. Um, and, you know, this being America, I think once you pay your penalty, um, it's over. Once, you know, so he has served his penalty, and I think we should just move on from that. Um, again, so impressed with TJ Dillashaw like his gas tank was always one of the best in the business and after more than two years off which is that was one of my biggest questions like what's his gas tank? hey it has gone nowhere <laughs> that dude he's solid and let's think you know the the knee fighting through the knee injury you know what was that after the first round after the second or did that happen in the first or the second I can't recall but you know, then then the Grand Canyon size freaking cut in his face. Like, yeah, that guy's mentally tough, man. Can't say enough about that. Let's move over here and talk about Corey Sanhagen real quick. I thought Corey fought a great fight. Um, he was very fluid, you know, with his jab, with his one-two. He, he threw um, some good uppercuts. He threw some good, uh, you know, check left hooks. His movement was very good. Um, his lateral side to side and and uh, evading was very good. He even did a couple of spinning techniques there. One of them landed pretty good, that uh, spinning back fist. Um, however, most of his spinning 
techniques were not good because TJ would get a takedown on those um, and not being able to hold them. But um, Corey had a good fight. He never got rocked. Never saw him in trouble. And every time TJ put him up against the fence, it seemed like at will, Corey would just reverse the position and turn him to the fence. So how do we get to this judge's scoring card? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, criteria now is based on, you know, as I said, number one, damage, uh, ring control, and aggression, I believe, are, are the main criteria. So damage clearly goes to Sanhagen. Um, you know, I, I can't be sure about this, but I think the strike count goes to Sanhagen, too. I think it was very close, but... If I'm guessing, I, I'd say Corey landed a few more shots, so I'm going to give him that. Um, the flying knee, you know, that didn't cause the cut, but it was pretty. Um, it did jack up TJ's nose. Uh, but um, I, <laughs> submission attempts. Corey Sanhagen was attempting a heel hook, which puts pressure on the knee. That's how he shredded TJ's knee. No points are awarded for that. No points are awarded for the inverted triangle, which you never see in MMA, ever. Like, one more thing about the, the heel hook. You know, I, I was talking to my buddy JR was with me, and I, and I thought I heard that thing pop right there live. And I said to my buddy, did, did, did that knee just pop? Did he just shred that guy's knee? And on my beautiful... 77 inch OLED I'd swear I could see that leg pulsate or vibrate right around that knee something happened there so that was all bad and we get to the judging scorecards and the judges just give it to TJ Dillashaw which like honestly I'm not mad at it but if we're looking at the scoring criteria today for MMA like that that's not a win I don't even think T.J. Dillashaw really had ring control. Like, he was pursuing a lot of that fight, probably the majority of it, more than half of it. But that doesn't, like, what's-his-name was pursuing or walking down Sean O'Malley the entire fight the other week. Like, what does it matter? Just because you're moving forward doesn't mean you're winning a fight. Um, no submission attempts from T.J. Dillashaw, but about three submission attempts from Corey Sanhagen. Again, the strikes landed. And it, I, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. But you know what? I'm just a guy talking to my cell phone that puts out upside down videos. So you probably shouldn't listen to anything I say. But I'm really interested to what, you know, I, I would like to see people comment or question below. I really want to know what people think about that decision. Like I said, I'm not too mad at it. But I do think it was the wrong one. And what's a byproduct? I think Corey Sanhagen, I think his stock's going to fall. He was number two, ranked number two coming into this fight at Bantamweight. TJ Dillashaw wasn't even ranked. But I think that stock's going to fall, man. Like, you're in the UFC. You're ranked number two in the division. When you have a guy that badly hurt, you got to finish him. So that's my real one negative for Corey is that he didn't finish. And I think we got to give T.J. Dillashaw a lot of credit because he didn't finish. So good on both those guys, honestly. Loved that fight. Very entertaining. I, I just, I'm having an issue with that decision this morning. A little bit of an issue. So, again, please let me hear your comment. Let me, I want to know what y'all think about the decision. I think that'll about do it. Mm -hmm. Little side note. I did lose my little loud clicker, so I can no longer just start and stop these sessions. That's a bummer. But we'll try to figure that out in the future. As always, thank you for listening. Be good. Be safe. Boom. Boom.